Hey, Harry, why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> I don't know. Because it was running away from Lil Z. Oh, of course. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to open with a joke, it backfired. Anyway, right. Uh, hey, everyone, welcome back to Channel 41. And today we're doing the next film in the series of uh, film analysis podcasts for the WJC Exam Board for Film Studies. And today we're doing City of God. Let's or, go straight into it. Um, yeah, okay. What I love about Section A, the foreign films, is that it's all about the uh, no, how did the, meaning. the the traditional aspects of cinema or, yeah. or something. So, c- cinematic techniques. Mm. That's it. So because it's more focused on like the meanings yeah. of the films. So and, that's yeah. essentially micro elements, macro elements. Yeah, I, I would get, get s- talk in, about. You got to get into yeah. those ma- micro and macro elements a lot to yeah. get the get, to the, get marks. the marks. So we're gonna first. I would uh, strongly suggest you talk about the opening scene. Opening scenes of, in films are very important. Yeah, and sometimes they're the most talked about in yeah. these exams because they're so they set up the they either set up the characters extremely well mm-hmm. or they set the scene extremely well. Or, and especially in City of God, they yeah. do set very up well. The There's a lot of stuff. Very well. Another reason why the opening scenes are chosen uh, a lot is because. The students that do legit no work um, <laughs> only bother to watch the opening. Yeah, and then just think <laughs> that's good enough. That's yeah, well, right. well, that. there we go. <laughs> I don't need to watch the rest of the film now. Anyway, right. Um, so the opening scene to City of God. There are a lot of fast cuts and edits. Yeah, um, the, it's a fast, yeah, very fast pace. It's a fast pace. The sound is fast in pace, and it's all about. Um, the, this chicken, the um, everyone is is chasing after this chicken. Yeah. I'll talk about that in a bit. But the very first shot that opens is a knife. Yeah, a knife being. I, I can only assume it's being sharpened on some sort of rock or uh, some, some piece some, of stone. Like rough edge. Yeah. yeah, rough edge. So that immediately is setting up this theme of you know this isn't like you know Violence. airy fairy. Yeah, uh, film. This is going to be gritty. Down Already to setting up thing. some violence yep. with. Like, yep. I mean, violence, obviously, there's uh, in this. Yeah, in this film, there's a lot of um, themes on guns, and a lot yeah. of the characters possess guns and yeah. weaponry and things like that. And the first image we see is a weapon, is a, weapon. a knife. It's a knife. Now, our film teacher, who is very good, he has uh, suggested that um, it might be worth talking about the fact that all these snippets, all these little bits of flash imagery that we're getting are actually point of view shots from the chicken. Yeah. And that's very good because it's what's essentially happening here is that this this poor chicken that's been caught and look at me, I sound like a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> um there's been there's been caught and strapped down. It's it's um it's just bewildered not bewildered, it's just stunned by everything around it. It's watching its its friends it's get feeling their, panicky. Yeah, panicky yeah. is get and you know because the fast when, cuts yeah. and fast edits. Because you see that. the flashes of the knife, but and then when you when there's shots of the chicken, you can tell it's like breathing much quicker than it is, and it's yeah. blinking, blinking. So yeah, it's yeah. like I like only see these flashes of the knife yeah, when yeah, it yeah. blinks. And the knife is something we constantly go back to. I mean, we don't see the faces very well, or any face we do see, they're certainly not in focus. Not mm. until we get to Lil Z. Yeah, not until least. the chicken actually escapes. Yeah. Um, and the so yeah we're constantly going back to to the uh, to the knife and that's because should they actually be point of view shots of the chicken the knife is the only thing that it's concerned about it, it that that knife is what's going to kill it yeah and there are close ups there's a lot of close ups there's a lot of close ups extreme close ups as well as on like the hand like a hand with the knife yep. and like the um, like the actual chicken's face you've got like the people actually handling the chickens and things and, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah um, I did have it written down somewhere. I can't seem to find it. But basically, the chicken. Uh, this is going into a bit more macro element style mm. now. But the chicken is a representation of the people of the favela. Of yeah, the it's slums. a metaphor. It's a metaphor of the, of, God. of the of the city of God. So it's very you're, symbolic. If you're trapped in, in the city of God, as the chicken was, it was tied down, ready to be boiled alive. Well, not alive, but ready to have its throat slit and cooked. Yeah. It um, escaped, and as soon as it did, all hell broke loose. Well, yeah. as soon as it was trying to escape, all hell broke loose. It was mayhem. It was it was um, uh, its life was being increasingly threatened. It had yeah. tons of people chasing after it with guns and weapons and stuff. And in doing so, we get not close ups, but um, the cinematography makes it clear enough that the people chasing the chicken they're very young. They're kids almost. Yeah. 
kids with guns. Kids with guns shooting Again, at the chickens. Setting up the theme for the film that you know this isn't um, going to be a wary fairy. This is mm. this is uh, a serious subject matter. It relates to what um, what Rocket says mm-hmm. after this scene because he's Rocket is like the narrator of this film. Yeah, and he he goes um, if if you run they get you. Yeah, if you. If, if you, you stay, stay they, they get, get you, you too. too. Yeah, they being uh, he says if they run, they, if you run, they get you. And in that sense, it's the police because mm. when he says that, the camera's on the police. Yeah, he says, and if you run, they get you. No, sorry, hang on, what was it? If you stay, if you stay, they get you. No, if you if, run, they get you. If you stay, stay they, get, they you get, you get you too. Yeah, well, one one day is the police, and the other day is the um, the hoodlum, and yeah. Lil Z's gang, and all that, um, which is also. Uh, What's the word? Uh, emphasised on in the opening scene, you get the this sort of iconic long shot between. Well, uh, they call it an orbital shot. It's where Rocket's in the middle, and the camera and is sort of evolving, evolving, revolving around him. And you yes. get this iconic long shot of the police on one end, and then the camera spins around to see yeah. the hoodlum on the other end, and that it shows like the two yeah. opposing sides. So you got yeah. the police and you got the hoodlums who we don't know their roles in the story so far, but Not we so, assume yeah. the police are fighting for yeah, the good, yeah. and like the other side, they're like the evil gang and yeah, things yeah. like that. So uh, that again is setting up uh, this theme and um, of, of uh, you know an urbanized version of war, I guess between. Yeah. Two two groups. Yeah, two opposing wars and yeah, yeah. Um, two opposing sides. Sorry. When you have that uh, iconic long shot and we look over um, the uh, Lil Z's gang all with their guns out, Lil Z has the biggest gun out of all of them. They make that quite. Yeah, good. everyone do, else has pistols, has pistols or handguns. He has a proper machine. He's gun, got a huge he? thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that not that they haven't done that enough already, but again, that makes him clearly the figure of power yeah, in this the, group. Even though he's not. He's not the largest in terms yeah. of f- physically. In yeah, that, yeah. But he's not bulked up or anything. I, but, but he he possesses the most power by having like the most powerful yeah. weapon. He's also the first person that we actually see holding uh, the, a, a gun in yeah, this film. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah. He, he? I suppose he's actually the first person we see holding any weapon of some kind. Because he's the first we, person we see, we see the, properly. Yeah, because like we see of, like, close a, up we see things. a knife being held, but we don't know who the, who's holding We don't know who's holding the knife. knife. We see people playing Lil music, Z. but we don't see who's playing the music. Yeah. We def- we get a clear shot of Lil Z's face yeah. when he's ordering, go get that chicken. Yeah, exactly, ordering. I like that. Yeah. He, he's the one in control. He's the one in command. But um, another way that, uh, that there's that point where Rocket is... Um, saying Lil Z you have to find me first and then Lil Z steps out of the corner and everything goes into slow motion yeah with Lil Z like distorted yeah being yep exactly and like you know that he's going to be the new character and yeah. you know that it's the character that he's Rocket's sig- talking yeah. about you know he's a significant yeah character at this point yeah um, what else have I got? Violent imagery, the knife so I've done that done that oh yeah the colour uh, the, 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 the mise en scene, scene. Yeah. the colour palette in this uh, scene that it's it's, it's got, got like a blue tint yeah, to it. Yeah, it's cold, it's sad, it's tragic, it's bleak, and uh, that makes it all the more um, warm-hearted when I, when we get onto another scene we're going to talk about later, yeah. which is the scene that follows this one, um, the scene where we have our, our first flashback to the 60s. Yeah. Um, you've got the sound of the knife. Yeah, that was mm. something we were talking about. The, right, again, right at the very start where we see the knife being sharpened, that sound, that... Ch- ch- yeah. That sound is very overpowering compared yeah. to all the other sounds. You hear you hear the music, you hear in, the the music back. in the background, but you, that that sharpening of the knife is the main. Yeah. yeah. So, um, do you want to try and impersonate? Uh, not impersonate. Do you want to try and mimic that uh, sound? So you you play like a light. <laughs> <laughs> <going on>. do <laughs> Yeah, it's literally it, it that. Overpowers it it. overpowers yeah. any sound that's in the background. Yeah. Unusual activity. Yeah. Right, uh, <laughs> um, yes. Uh, another thing. You got a question. Uh, question the question a lot in, in this exact because part of the mark scheme says uh, be skeptical, and mm. one thing I think is good to raise is why a chicken? Yeah, because you've got these glorified birds like a phoenix or like a a, a falcon mm. or um, uh, like a dragon almost. Yeah, a raven. Like, and that's like a yeah, raven. 
but a chicken, it's common. A chicken is, a chicken is more of common, the people. Yeah. It's easier to relate to of mm. the people. It's, it's a binary animal. It, it, because it, it's more yeah. grounded, because yeah. it's a flightless bird, which means that exactly. it's more likely to be like related to people and, yeah. get, and be like, that mm-hmm. bit get involved with people and that's a very good thing yeah. to, to bring up it's a flightless bird yeah so which means it can't more difficult once again it can't to escape. escape yeah yeah um right, on, on. oh yeah upon when the chicken does finally escape and it's got that sort of the, the sound has stopped and you just see yeah, the, the music has stopped yeah peek its, it peeks its head around the corner it's almost comical i find but yeah because it, it peeks its head yeah. around and then like what attempts we've, to run across what the we've road. been told is that uh the chicken appears almost clueless yeah because it, uh, it was under so much yeah. panic that now it doesn't know where it is. Yeah, now it doesn't know where it is. But also you could say that that is because the people of the favela, of the of the slums, they've been there their whole lives, and even if they do try to escape, it's the only life they know. What are they going to yeah, do? They can't they, do they anything. Will, they, they themselves they will, will be clueless. They will eventually return to it because yeah. they've got no, nowhere else they belong. Um... What else have we got? Uh, that's more or less it. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah we've got uh, graffiti is shown a lot. Yeah, in, and it's in a very shots. neglected area, isn't yeah. it? Because it's got again, rubble. Em- emphasising like it's a neglected area. The mise-en-scene, you talk about the mise-en-scene when talking about like the neglected area and things yeah. like that. Um, that's more or less it. Yeah, that's it for that first scene. Yep. Oh, uh, oh uh, one more thing, sorry. Oh, okay. Traditional filmmaking. This opening scene breaks the rules of traditional filmmaking as we've yeah, been talking. Yeah, it does. Uh, uh, 180 degree Yeah, we've heard, heard about that. Um, that that rule's been broken. If you don't know what that yeah. is, Google it. It's pretty simple. But basically, you don't... Um, in you traditional d- filmmaking, you're not supposed to show a shot of one angle and then the next shot can't be more than 180 degrees of that angle because then it looks like the person that was looking left flipped. is now looking right. It doesn't yeah. look right. They're not They're completely bothered went out about that. that. Yeah. So uh, that, was, that wasn't the whole point of the yeah. scene. It was to give a sense of scale in terms of like how many scale people are involved. Yeah. But the main point that they do break these traditional uh, laws of filmmaking is when Lil Z is present. So that's something to, to, to write about. It's it's um, again, it's just showing the significance of his character. And oh right, yeah. Okay. He's sort of he's not a normal person, I guess. Mm. Yeah. So if it's normal, you obey the, the rules of filmmaking. Yeah. If he's not normal, he's may- he's mayhem, he's manic. Yeah, he's taking up the yeah. most, the majority of the break screen. The hundred, break the hundred and eighty degree rule and do mm. this and the other. Right, next right, scene. That's it, the next scene, uh, which is the transition to the 60s. Yep, okay, right. Um, so we'll go. So this is literally the scene that follows. So you've got... Um, yeah, just after the orbital shot. Yeah, the orbital shot. That's quite a unique thing because yeah. it's it's you hear a clock and it's like a turn back in time. Yeah, it, like they couldn't make it any clearer. Yeah, um, it's like a, it's almost like a the time... Character that you replaces, could almost call it the time travel scene. Yeah, the character that replaces where Rocket was stood is now a kid, Younger Rocket, yeah. So it's obvious that it's a younger Rocket. So um, where have we got? Where have we got? Here we go. So yeah, the color palette was away before. Uh, it was yeah. that blue tint. Um, mm. It was cold. It was it was uh, bleak. Now it's uh, changed to a golden brown sort of tint, and it's warm. Yeah. So it's sort of showing that this is uh, a less lesser uh, oppressed mm. sort of area, less corrupt. Although not entirely free from corrupt, we learn that a bit later with, when we are sort of introduced to the police. Because you get, um, you also hear people going "Hey, kid!" to like Rocket and mm-hmm. things like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, little dice say "Hey, kid!" to Rocket, which yeah, yeah. obviously in- indicates more that it's gone back in time. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because I forgot to mention that because uh, Lil Z says "Hey, kid, stop that chicken!" Yeah, and then li- li- literally just a few moments later, when we go he back in time, he says pro- "Hey, kid, give me that ball!" Or, yeah, yeah, because they're playing with the football. Yeah. Um, um, so you got there's yeah, also yeah. Rocket's representation in this is quite unique to how he is to um, like later on when he's a bit older yep. he's seen as an outsider yes because, uh, um, the first line that we ever hear being said to him in this scene mm-hmm. is you're useless man because he he, Cause he, 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 saved he didn't the ball. save the ball from going in the goal yeah, he was it, makes him an out, yeah it makes him an outsider because it's um, Brazil. It's Brazil, and football is humongous in Brazil. Yeah. It's such a big thing. Yeah. Um, like, who ever heard of a Brazilian that can't play football sort of thing? Yeah, it's, I mean, like, it's almost like a stereotype sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and the fact that Rocket's not good at it is kind of, like, makes... Sh- that set him up shows, to be the outsider. Yeah, shows that he's an outsider. Now, um, another reason why this is a good scene is because it's just it's all about the comparison between this and the opening scene because we, we've we've gone back now to traditional filmmaking mm. it's it's 
um, there are a couple of a good few close ups. Yeah. But like before, it was all handheld. It was shaky. It was chasing the chicken. It was point of view of yeah. the chicken. It was point of po- uh, point of view of the people chasing the chicken. Now it's nothing like that at all. No, it's quite like a lot. All, all, most of the shots are quite stable, and if they are shaky, they're just like walking shots, like yeah, walking yeah. with the uh, with the person that is moving. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And um, it shows, like the mise en scene shows that um, how different that surrounding area was. Like in um, present day, what um, before it went back in time, it showed the area was crumbly and it was all yeah. big, humongous buildings. And but now like it's not but even. But now the city isn't even crumbly. No, so it's, it's not even it's, fully it's, developed yet. It's has just it? being established. Yeah. yeah, and that is why it's very significant that this is the point that we introduce the story of the tender trio because yeah. you need to show showing the tender trio shows that the roots of crime in the city began from the start. And this yeah. is a film. This is this is a it shows section that about just, city and urbanisation. Um, increase like the um, the scale of the crime and the mm. violence increases, increases, increases. Yeah. And it starts at these like the basic like petty thefts and yeah. things like that from the tenant. Which is slightly trio. weirdly sort of moral thefts as well. The mm. film teacher was saying how it's yeah because it's, it's like the scene is the scene is working class heroes, aren't mm. they? Because um, they're robbing a truck. Um, and but they give money the and the gas to the other people. Yeah, yeah they're giving they, it all away. They they ultimately do these acts for good, but they don't want to ki- and they don't want to kill anyone. Yeah, like they never want to say, "Oh, we, let's kill this guy and get out of here." They never want to do that. They just threaten yeah. the per- like the gas truck driver. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, what else have we got? And um, that is kind of it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, where does is, where does this scene end? I suppose it's, um, I would say it, talk, it ends with um, uh, the Enigma being set up with the. Um, oh no, no, you're doing that bit. Yeah, the motel. Scene, I'll the be, motel scene. Yeah, but I think um, I think that whole happiness bit properly ends when. Um, uh, hold on, I have to think. Just after, maybe just after the. Um, the tender trio rob the gas truck and then they run back to playing football. Yeah, they run back. That's where it stops. Yeah, and then, that's. And yeah, then it gets I'm happy to more, say that's. Yeah, where because it stops. That, that's, that's when Lil's little dice gets involved and yeah. like. It, that's a good point to stop writing. Yeah, if you're about, talking about um, the sixties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. The next scene that we're going to talk about is. Hang the, on. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I just want to bring this in because again, this is macro elements. This is messages and values and meanings of that particular scene when they do the hold up with the gas truck. Our film teacher said that. It's suggesting idealism is replaced by uh, nihilism. Right. If you don't know what those terms mean, Google them. It's not too difficult to mm, get you. Yeah. Yeah, but basically, nihilism is what is it like? No rules. Yeah, no rules. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's it's almost kind of um, what I'm going to call Joker esque, mm. as a, as in the Dark Knight Joker, yeah. Heath Ledger's Joker, where there's there's no rules. Just be mad about it because they yeah. they did they do a hold up to get money. Yeah, yeah they do a hold up to get money, and then they give away the money. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's like you yeah. don't expect them to give away the money. You just mm. expect them to keep the money and buy I don't know more weapons or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but they don't. Right, that's right. Uh, yeah, that's it. My scenes. Yeah. Done, so now over to on you. T- on to my scenes, which the first scene that I'll be talking about is the motel scene, which is still in the sixties flashback. Yeah, yeah. But it's a very unique scene in the way that it's filmed and just like how it creates an enigma yep. and um, all that later. So the first thing is back to that enigma is the fact that when uh, the Tender Trio invade that hotel and they mm-hmm. want to, their primary um, objective is to steal. So the fact that they go in there aiming to steal and they don't kill, they make sure on the way in that they don't kill and they give little dice. Um, an objective, just when they when he sees the cops, just shoot the window. Yeah, yeah. And they go in there, it, it, absolutely just threatening people, not killing them. Well, once again, they just don't. They just want the money and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And then you get the shot of the window being broken. Yep. Which is good cinematography, how it shows right when the window is being broken. Yep. And also, um, then they scarper. They yep. get out and then they get in the car and they drive off. And the uh, the enigma that's created is the sheer fact that when they leave in yep. the car, when they, leave. It, they have some very slow, quite haunting shots of 
Um, Very the, different shots to how the actual yeah, holdup was filmed. Of the people that were in the host, the motel, uh, that had just been murdered. They'd just yeah. been shot. They were. Um, so it's it like, quite, well, hang on, who's murdered them? The, yeah, the, the trio traced, were just yeah, in there, and they didn't the, kill them. The trio did. never kill, but then, he, but however, like, um, like they've. Um, their dead bodies are still yeah, in yeah. there. Like you kind of, like when I first saw this, I thought maybe I don't. Maybe it's something related to the police. Yeah. I don't know. Like maybe the police like shot them to frame them. Mm. That's how I took it. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, but they, um, they, the trio got a sense of what's right and what's wrong. So you wouldn't. Yeah. You, you don't wouldn't think expect at all them to leave them to, in that yeah. sort of. And the sheer fact that they go in there them. and they just take things and then leave, mm. and they and um. When the window, um, another good bit of uh, editing with cinematography is the sheer fact that when the window breaks, it's in slow motion. Yes. So it's got good cinematography leaning into the window right yeah. up to what, up right up to it, and then when it breaks, it's slow motion, and it gives that thing as oh the police are here, get out quickly. We want we're with them. We want them to escape, and um, you've got um, let's see here. Uh, when um, it's the same thing like when Lil Z walks out of the alley. Yeah, in slow motion. Yeah, in slow motion. So like to that... give, a, give an effect. Yeah, that this could, this slow motion could be related to him. I can't this. remember what it's called, but there is a word for that where they link it back to something that happened earlier in the film, so that you can put two and two together and realize, oh, okay, that must be. Um, mm, yeah. Lil, Lil Z that has yeah. done that. Um, I can't remember the word. Um, I think we did it in English a while back. I can't, I can't remember, but um, <laughs> wouldn't be too difficult to find, I would imagine. Yeah, and um, back to that bit with um, where you see the massacre at the ho- the motel. The yeah, fact yeah. that um, there's no sound, no music, no yep. close-ups. Like there's no focus on any of the people. It just gives you a sense of scale, like yeah, how many yeah. people are actually dead. And, and it's got that effect again that they use quite often in the film, where the camera is almost as if like you are just peeking through yeah it's like a ghost feel and, yeah like you, you're powerless to do it that's what i've written down here it's yeah, like yeah. you're you're a ghost like you're powerless to do anything but um like you're just helpless you have to watch what um what's happened and mm. all that and um just the um Cause they the use way that. the body the way the people are tied up yeah it, it's and now they're dead it's like butchers it's yeah. quite horrible it is it, it's very grotesque Mm. It, it's supposed to be off-putting, and the filmmaking techniques make that pretty obvious. Yeah, and that's a very good thing to write about. Yeah, and I also, also found I don't know if you have you ever seen because um, another thing you might want to mention is intertextuality, which is where you make references to other films. We sort of touched on this on the Forrest Gump video that we did, mm. but um, have you ever seen uh, Snatch? Snatch no, is a it's a brilliant that. film from Guy Ritchie, and uh, I'm if I've got the dates right for when which film came out first. I wouldn't be surprised if that, um, if the motel hold up the, when they're doing the hold up, because mm. it's all handheld camera and it's it's like the camera is sort of spinning all over the place where, and and it's like mayhem and all that. In the opening scene to Snatch, uh, Snatch is a gangster film, so I wouldn't be surprised okay. if they did use intertextuality with mm. this because Lil, you know Lil Z loves being a gangster and all the rest of it. Mm. In the in the very opening scene to Snatch, there's uh, a jewelry theft, and it. That is what the the camera is doing. It is it's like spinning all over right, the place, okay. and, and it's it's filmed not completely the same, but very similar to right. this motel sort of thing. Uh-huh. And I didn't keep count, but I'm pretty. There couldn't have been any more than four or five people, right, and okay. just the same as a tender trio. There's three, four, including Lil Z in this scene. Mm. So yeah, references made there with right. with the way that the the camera was used to film the scene. Yeah, and um. Just a little note to add. Oh, just after this scene is the introduction of a slightly of an important character, but he's only in it for a small time. Is Shorty? Shorty. Yeah. Uh, he's um, like the tender trio just so happened to crash into the bar that yeah. they were at. Um, yeah. it, Shorty's bar. Um, at the time was of their Shorty's escape. Bar or was he just drinking there? Well, he was. No. Oh, it was. Yeah, it was sorry. at the local he, bar where he, Shorty, where happened, Shorty to happened to be. Yeah. To be yeah. And it's um. 
like it's turns it like it shows like a medium to close um medium to close shot. Oh yeah, it sort of zooms in on his yeah. face slightly. And it's yeah. like it's almost like a hero shot, like it yeah. takes up a good point of the um yeah, good yeah. uh area of the frame. And um yeah, and it's um we have to keep him in mind because once again Rocket then goes another notorious guy, but it's not time to tell his story. Yet. Yeah. So yeah, I like the it, way they do that. They you get that a lot. You had it with Knockout Ned as well. Knockout it, Ned. It makes yeah. me. It made me certainly want to keep watching the film. Saying yeah. this guy's interesting. Keep watching and you'll find out more. Yeah. It's like that. Stay tuned and after yeah. the break you'll, yeah, you'll yeah. keep being it's entertained. Like, sort of. It's thing. like just hang on a bit because this guy's interesting. Things like that. Yeah. yeah it's quite. You could talk about that in terms of Attention like grabbing. editing and yeah. yeah and like maybe narrative and things like that. It's um, a good character to talk about Shorty because. Arguably, p- people have said that he is the very reason why crime sort of began. Because you had the tender trio that's well, Robin Hood style. They were yeah. sort of working class yeah, heroes, working class yeah. heroes sort of type. But Shorty was the, the first person we see that's in like a city of God evil. that has actually murdered. Yeah, because he murders his wife. Because he murders his wife. And he buries yeah. her. And Rocket Rocket tells us that that the, the newspapers covered that. Mm. It was it was a uh, man kills in the city of God. Like it was unheard of, and critics and people who analyse this film, they've said that that act of the media putting it out there that yeah. this is now the breaking point where crime That's in what big it off. yeah because is where this is the moment of crime in the city of God kicks off in the wrong direction. Mm. Also, the motel the, as well, yeah, that whole thing yeah, yeah, where yeah. the police blame the tender trio for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's about it for that, that scene. scene. Have we got right. how many more? Just, right, just no, yeah, we've got one more. Now, I'll tell you for why this one's so short, because you're probably thinking, oh, Forrest Gump, you did like 14,000 <laughs> hours on that video. <laughs> uh, no, because, because th- you don't want to write about so many you scenes. Don't wanna you don't want to take write the about scenes, reams and reams. Yeah, yeah, and write them about them in a lot of well, detail. That's, that's what you got to do. Like, to get, like, you can write quite a bit about... Um, yeah. You can include a lot of scenes with not a lot of detail, but then again, that will only get you, I think, the maximum of a C. C, low C. Maximum, but, but to the get reason, the high grades. Yeah, the reason we're giving you these, because you only write about two scenes, Yeah. but the reason we're giving you more than that is because we don't know what the question's going to be. Yeah. So it's always it, good to it, know more yeah, than each two scene, scenes. Yeah, but I mean, if you're talking about structure-wise, it, um, in terms of City of God, like if you, yeah. you had to talk about... like. Um, you're most likely just going to talk about one scene, yeah. City of God, because you have to incorporate two of your three foreign films. Yeah. So, yeah, we're giving you more than one, obviously, just to give you a bit of a range, just yeah. to see like um, which questions could come up. And these scenes, I think, we found were effective in a lot of, sen- um, yeah, yeah. A lot of ways. And if there's anything that we didn't point out that you, you might have um, thought, then also that's good. Yeah. In fact, I would keep it to yourself because yeah, there don't is... Don't go announcing it. Yeah, basically there's a pie in the mark scheme that's basically saying... Oh, I can't remember word for word what it is, but it's along the lines of saying that you, you've you got... Oh, that was it, originality. So if you think that you've yeah, thought of a, a brilliant point. point that no one else has thought of, keep it to yourself yeah. and write it down in the exam because the examiners will read that and go, that's a brilliant point. Literally no one else has talked about that. That mm. is brilliant originality thousand marks yeah, <laughs> yeah. well um, not quite but you get yeah, yeah. quite a few marks for originality and like developing a yeah, yeah. inks point that's re- that no other person has mentioned in another paper yeah so let's wrap it up with our last well, our last scene. scene which is Benny's death oh which is yeah <laughs> which is yeah Benny's one of the, the most liked characters in this film actually yeah yeah and um just the fact that um, Benny as a character is very interesting as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the filmmaking techniques really set him up in the in the frame of goodness. I yeah, guess. <laughs> they're um, making him a more likable person. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that um, the the thing he wants to do is he wants to be like Tiago, who's yeah. another character in the film, who he was admiring his clothes, and now all. Benny wants to be, do is change from being a, like a gangster to a cool uh, guy wearing yeah. those sort of similar clothes yeah, and the, the coolest hood in the city of God yeah. they call him and there's that uh, issue on representation this is macro element related stuff that Tiago obviously is a white character and Benny being a black character and, and Benny yep. the black character wants to be 
lighting, lighting, white character. Light, the white so character, yeah. There's, uh, there's something you've talked about there. I mean, mm. there's Carrot who's a white character, but pretty much yeah, there's but, I none mean, others. There's no, there's no relation in terms of Benny wants to be like Carrot, though. No. And, yeah, apart from that, there's no others apart from Angelica, you could argue. I think she's not... Uh, uh, I don't know if that's just a town or something she's got going there. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyway, um, but uh, uh, yeah. Knockout Ned also, he go- he goes to Carrot. So yeah, representation does, with the white characters in this film, you could say that basically the black characters go to the white characters for help. Yeah. That's something to talk about that. from macro um, wise. Um, it's, yeah, um, Benny's death. Yeah, Benny's death. Right, um, and just before this, um, you have Benny talking about how he want uh, to Angelica, how he wanted to leave. Yeah. Um, um, like how Try all he wanted to do was um, smoke pot, listen to rock, and have, own a farm. Own a farm. And like the fact that just um, before this as well, he saved um, Blackie yeah. from being Lil killed Z. by Little Z, was gonna which. Shoot him. Um, which is a tragedy in a sense because it's Blackie because um, Blackie little is, Blackie that kills Blackie accidentally kills Benny and yeah. it's like it seals his fate yeah. almost and um, and getting on to more um, Benny's death it's all it's called Benny's farewell the yeah. actual scene which yeah. is quite good you can talk about that like the editing and the the narrative how it's like it's not Benny's farewell as in he's leaving it's Benny's farewell as in he's from life yeah he's like he's this is the point going to he's die, going to die. Yeah. And it's um, yeah, and it's you could say in terms of like a three act structure to the film. Yeah, you could say that this is the end of the first act mm. because now after this scene, it's the main struggle because after this we have like the Lil Z and Carrot yeah. War. Yeah. For yeah, for control over the city of God, and um, so you. You know, like in this scene, it shows represents Benny as such a positive character, and how he's they say that he's the coolest in the hood, and they make him seem like such a good person. And then they go to little Z, little Z, it's like, oh, oh, and then there's little Z who has never danced in, in yeah, his life. Yeah. Which again, you, you almost feel sorry for little Z because it's like, um, you have, um, like he tries to approach a girl to get him. Um, get her to dance with him, but like mm-hmm. she says no, as she's already with someone. Yeah, yeah. And um, Lil Z is um, like he takes his jealousy and his problems out on other people. Yeah. And um, you got so many because again, bringing back um, uh, what's his name, Benny, <laughs> in the uh, in, in the light of um, in the in the light of good again. At the, they make it clear that at this farewell party, there are so many types of people that you've mm. got the soul group, the groovy group I think he calls them the church yeah. group he calls them There's, it's basically like saying everyone loves him as an audience you should love him too yeah so that's that's very effective mm. piece of filmmaking that they've got going yeah. on sorry I kind of interrupted you yeah that's, fu- that's fine that's good that's a good point mm. and um, also just um, the sheer fact that uh, Lil Z now has to take out his anger on uh, other people like Knockout Ned mm-hmm. and yeah, sorry about that. We just had to pause it for a minute there. What what, what point did we? We were talking leave about on? how Lil Z was taking out his anger, like of his like his jealousy, oh, yeah, yeah. on Knockout Ned, who's seen as um, well, we're not properly intro- well, introduced him properly yet. No, not yet. But um, he's already seen as a likable character, like mm-hmm. from our point of view, mm-hmm. because he's got the girl that Lil Z he's tried to ask to dance. And then he seems very innocent. Yeah, he's very like innocent. You, like you want yeah. to say, what, Lil Z, what are you picking on him? Yeah, for? why why do yeah. you pick on him in the first place? Yeah, because it's like, like you for a short time you feel sorry for Lil Z because he's um because he uh because you know he he doesn't get the girl he just doesn't know how to dance and he's like he's seen as like again seen as an outsider, but then that's immediately crushed when we don't feel sorry for him when he humiliates L- Knockout Ned, mm-hmm. which is. Absolutely, you know, with his, which is unnecessary. He doesn't have to do that, yeah, but yeah, yeah. he does because of his character and like the way yeah. he's been, yeah, the way he's been portrayed and things. Now, like if you're that. writing about the scene in the exam and you think to yourself, "No, no, I'm talking about knockout Ned and and stuff," when I'm meant to be talking about Benny's death scene, don't worry, 
this is all within that. Yeah, this Benny's is all Death within scene. this sequence. This sequence is about yeah. fifteen minutes long. Yeah, so. that's why this is such a good one to talk about because there is so, there's so much many to things talk in about. It. Yeah, so diverse. You've um, got Benny's yeah. death itself. You've got and, the intro. You've got and we're only talk. covering. We're, we're covering the good points of yeah. it. Good points of it, but there are other points within this that we might not mention. Yeah, yeah. That you can come up with that you can write in the exam. Mm-hmm. But anyway, right. With um, the whole location, like the actual mise en scène of the party yeah, yeah. looks like a party if you know yeah, what I mean. yeah. it's not it's like, very realistic yeah it's not like a this is a film yeah it's not like you can tell oh this is a film set or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that or this is this isn't real this isn't this real has been made to look like a party yeah no, it actually seems like a genuine yeah party. like in the slums like yeah, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't like, there's <clears> no one point where i go oh look there's a bit of film set there or oh, well this is this is unrealistic mm. um yeah like the whole mise on scene looks um realistic and sets the mood like how serious this is yeah yeah, yeah. and um like when um we actually see benny get shot yeah we see it from a distance yeah and not only do we see it from a distance there's a lot of flashing because there's a um it's very restricted a, yeah restricted visuals because there's a um there's sound like there's a rock flashing lights. Um, there's a rock song playing and there's flashing lights that only gives us glimpses yeah. of what's being what's going on, and like when we actually hear the gunshot, we're like there's so there's so many flashes yeah. and it's like um what oh there's a panic oh what happened please don't be Benny and it is Benny yeah and it's just like it really like it's another scene where it really impacts yeah. like gives you a visceral reaction like, yeah, no yeah. I didn't yeah. want Benny to die and this is again this is uh, something you can talk about because it's. You know, section A is all about the cinematic techniques, and the reason that we're responding in that way is because the way that it has been filmed to give us a restricted view of what's going on is the reason that we have that response. Mm. And I think there's another point. Hang on, where is it? Um, uh, yes, when the flashing lights start, a new song track starts. Yeah. And so that I certainly thought was. It, it had that sort of impact to it. It was like, oh, so something's on, gonna something's, happen. Something's kicking off here. Like, yeah, it starts something right changed. when Lil Z tries yeah. to take the camera from yeah. Benny. Yeah, like after he, like, he tried to. No, and then a new track yeah. goes on. Um, um, when he is shot, I've got here. It ends on it fades to black. Yeah, it fades to black. The whole scene, like it shows Lil Z like sobbing. Yeah, like, and this really is the first upset. time we've ever seen the scene transi- transition, transit. Yeah, um, like a do, proper fade, like an actual technique, yeah. other than like a flashback. Yeah, other than a flashback. This is this is the first time we've actually seen a transition yeah, transition being used through a fade to black. Mm. This hasn't been done so far, and our film teacher says that that could well signify that this is the point where everything goes wrong. Yeah. It this could, is, this yeah, is a, this is like the darkest moment. Yeah, yeah. darkest moment. And as yeah. you put it, this is where the end of the act comes. Yeah, the end of act one. That is when it ends. And then act two is when... This is now where the struggle kicks yeah. off between Carrot and and Lil Z, Lil the Z. all-out warfare the within war. the city of God, and um, it's like um, the whole thing where Benny says that all he wants to do is buy farm, smoke pot, and listen to rock. Yeah, just kind of seals his Irony. fate as well. Yeah. And he, also, the last all, song he listens to is a is rock, a rock song that makes it. Yeah, it's an I- ironic statement he makes there. And um, the fact um, on the topic like, of sound, yeah, I've got here that. Um, Oh, where's it gone? When uh, Lil Z tries to approach that woman, it, it, it's it's almost unrealistic because we we there's only ever one track being played, mm. right? Okay, because there's one DJ, and he's playing this rock bit thick bit, but then yeah. as soon as it cuts to uh, Lil Z trying to approach the woman, it's a different soundtrack. Yeah, and it is, it's, it's it? soft and smooth, and it's the sort yeah. of thing you get in a romance film when the man's yeah. approaching the woman and stuff like that, and so that again that sound adds to the effect of. Yeah. Oh my God! Am I, am I really seeing this? Lil Z yeah. is, is Lil Z's trying, trying to be to, nice, and, trying to approach someone and be nice. And then yeah. it, it's almost heartwarming, and then you realise yeah, it's immediately uh, cut yeah. when he humiliates knockout Ned. Yeah. yeah. And I put here where it talks about how, like, the representation of the characters are like in terms of age range. Like mm. Benny is like the mature adult, yeah. like uh, adult. Sorry, uh, he wants to move away. He wants to g- grasp yeah, yeah. his own life and take care of him, mm-hmm. himself. And Rocket is like the teen. Like um, yeah. how he has like quite um, 
like doesn't have many ambitions until yeah, a bit yeah, later yeah. on. Like, of course, he wants to um, be, be a photographer. photographer. But like his friend Stringy keeps mentioning, oh, you need to lose your virginity and yeah, things like yeah. that. It's like a te- typical teenage, yeah, typical desires. teenage thing, yeah. And um, and Lil Z has the youngest mindset, and he has like the mind of a child. Yeah. How he's still the same as when he was called Little Dice, even yeah. though he changed from Little Dice to Lil Z. Nothing's changed in terms yeah. of his personality. Yeah. And um, it shows when he doesn't know how to treat um. Uh, People respectively. Treat people respectively, and he doesn't know how to handle rejection. Yeah. Um, it was awkward fact, and almost sad. I felt sorry for him at yeah. that rejection point. Yeah. Made it even more sorry for uh, for Lilzy when Benny died, because he gets rejected there, but then he gets rejected again by Benny himself. Yeah. And in doing so, that, he has that flashback of them two together as kids. Yeah. And that reminded me that... Benny's the only real friend and of the, Lil Z that he's yeah. ever had and cares about. Like him. that's he's had for a long time. The other people are just like minor characters that yeah. are part of his gang. Yeah, yeah. And the reason that he's like got the mind of a child is like um, the fact that he he sees like other people like he sees guns, but he also um, guns as this as well. He he also sees people yeah. as like his toys. Yeah, like yeah. he. He, he wants to control him. He doesn't want Benny to leave. If he wants him to stick with him, but when he when they do what they want, um, they want by themselves. He doesn't like it, mm. and he lashes out. And um, the music is um, contrapuntal as yeah. well throughout a lot of it. Like the rock song is meant to be fighting. quite like happy and joyful, but yep. then Benny dies. You got um, Kung Fu Fighting, which again is a positive song, but the song in, the, in as of itself is contrapuntal as well. Yeah. It's talking about. Uh, uh, subject matter of fighting and yet yeah. he's upbeat and happy yeah and it's also contrapuntal because it's played when knockout Ned's being humiliated yeah. which is like um, yeah again it's contrapuntal and um, the um, yeah I think um, the only last thing to mention is that um, when the flashing lights start um, it hints that something's going to happen yeah like um, like the as if as if changed. Blackie's Blackie's appearance, change. yeah, as yeah. if Blackie's appearance didn't make it clear enough. Then when the flashing lights appear, it's like, oh, something's definitely going yeah. to happen here. Something here. I'm looking at something that looks different. Something has changed. Something's going to happen. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Oh no! Don't tell me Benny dies. Oh dear, he's dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And just to sum it up, it's a very good scene overall, just because it's got so many micro elements and macro elements in it that you can talk about. And the character roles and just everything, um, everything about this scene, and also the other scenes that we've talked about, are all very good and useful for the exam in the City of God. Yeah, right. Uh, that is us done. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, we'll see you again soon in our uh, series of films for the WJEC exam board in film studies. Yeah. What do you want to do? Next? Fight think, Club next? Yeah, we're going to do Fight Club. Fight Club next. next. The ultimate analysis. Yes. One, the close critical study. No, yeah. is it critical study? Critical study. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a critical study, <coughs> and then there's a more there's a yeah, general yeah. like auteur theory. And... Yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll be doing that one next, and um, we'll see you next time. Okay. See you later.